White Walker perpetuated offenses are considered especially heinous. In Westeros, four dedicated friends investigate and discuss these vicious episodes as members of an elite squad known as A Podcast Has No Name. I'm Ambush. I'm Castro. I'm Morg. And we are A Podcast Has No Name. Mm, 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 mm. We Where's our song? Oh, yeah, no, nah, I'm just sorry. I'm songed out. Wow. They're closing out the woo in these songs out. That really doesn't make sense. No, it's just it's, just the professional I rapper of the I've show. I've been writing. Yeah, like I've, I'm tapped out. I'm oh, really just, creatively you know, tapped right now. The pen is I'm empty. Down, down, down. The pen is no, empty. No, the pen is never empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. Shit, I, don't, I don't have it really right now. Okay. Unbelievable. Right. Um, yeah, and it would say it would be easy. It's a Wu Tang show. You know? <laughs> yeah, it would be yeah, easy. <laughs> Look how the hard you're making it. We're all gonna give it to you with no trivia. We're gonna cocaine straight from Bolivia. I'm doing all that. And you know, I would do that in honor of you, God. Yeah, let's talk about this fucking show. Okay. 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 All right. All right. All right. Reel it in. Reel it in. <laughs> Zero to a thousand. A verse for you, God, in honor of his accent <laughs> from the show. They even snuck Capadonna in the thing with some weird old out of time, out of space, didn't happen. Skip my Winter Wars verse in jail, and you never see me again. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, oh, man. Okay, so I'm going to give a quick just the Hulu synopsis of each episode, 6 through 10. Uh, Title and synopsis or description. Episode 6, Impossible. A bird's eye view of the woo. 7, Box in hand. The Diggs family moves on in different directions. Mm. 8, Labels. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Can you read the rest of the descriptions in Dennis's voice? <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> please, please, more. You Yo, know what to do. I you cannot know what to do, do it. I can't just yell right now. Hard S's. Son. <laughs> son. Back to the hood now, son. All right, let me see if I can do they this. They hooks and mains in here, son. <laughs> Hard S's. Hard S's. All right. You know, when you get invited to the bar mitzvah. Oh, y'all just going to do the brie right now, son? <laughs> the ladle at son spinach, son. <laughs> <laughs> Don't invite Dennis Cole from Woosaga to any bar mitzvah. He's not no you should do it, actually. Invite him to every bar mitzvah. <laughs> okay, oh, episode eight. God. Labels, son. Just labels. <laughs> just labels. <laughs> <laughs> Industry rule number 4080. Is that too loud? No. Um, nine, I declare war. The Shaolin and the Wu-Tang may be dangerous. Ten, assassination day. A mysterious tape makes the rounds in New York City. As people try and figure out who the group is, Bobby and Dennis try to figure out how to handle Attila. Good grief. <laughs> Man, that, that was the synopsis for the last Damn. episode? That's yeah. how they did that? That's crazy. Yeah. What up? Damn, do you think they were um John Henry shaming with Attila? With and do Attila? you like feel empathetic to do you feel empathetic when they do that? Like, you know. Nah. They, I, uh, whole king black man. Attila <laughs> No, see, Attila reminds me of I feel like Attila is that one dude in the hood that was larger than life. He may not have been terrorizing everybody, but nobody fucked with dude. But then you had but, versions of Attila. But, but this is like, what a stereotype is. That's why I'm thinking you take offense because in the hood, normally that motherfucker is like four foot eight, five one. This sometimes the whole, yeah. even if he's eh. super huge and he. But more you know, there was one hit acquitted motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I basically just, just through, thought this was like. Even, I'm sorry. I, I thought this was just basically the East Coast Debo. Yeah, but that's the thing. All right, so yeah. the dudes that were that big, they weren't all of that together. Like Attila was all the stereotypes of one. He's the gun-toting, knock you right. out with one punch. Get out of jail. 
like They're running up in people's crib. Those aren't the same people. <laughs> Got <laughs> like, it. Right. Like exactly. somebody of Attila size works for the dude that does all of that shit. Okay. Like well, those not, dudes. Not to get ahead. Yeah. But, uh, those dudes aren't their own bosses. Tell a pistol whipping two people with a gun, he should have got shot. That, you know, that, that's where <laughs> surrealism gets to me. Like, they get the drop. Look, and I, I don't care if we're jumping at our listeners know how I do. Look, you just out of jail. I would have kicked that nigga out on the road. What you all yelling at me? Commissary. <laughs> nigga, get your ass out. Walk, 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 walk. Get out of here. Right. And trust me, if they was upstate in New York, it's a long walk. Ain't no long right. So I would have kicked his ass. I wouldn't have gave him no gun. You ain't had no money. You just coming back. Pistol whipping people? Nah, you should be disadvantaged with a paper bag. Yo. You should be like trying to soak shit out. You shouldn't be so well equipped yeah, yeah, to yeah. hit the ground and shit. So fuck, man. He yeah. was all well. He hit the ground running. Nah, man. You just out of jail. He hit the ground. To super your running too. But anyway, like, it's yeah. late eighties. Yeah. All right, but let's get to it. Sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> so first thing, um, favorite episode, if you have one, Castro. What's your favorite episode? Um, I'll I'll have to say two, just because um, the last episode I really really liked, mm -hmm. but I liked it because I felt um the momentum built to that episode. So yeah, episode one, like I can't wait to binge it. So it's kind of loaded episode because it was kind of building to that, and so you just kind of liked that episode because it was the most well done. Mm -hmm. But um, the most the episode I really enjoyed was them on tour. Before the before the deal got pulled for him, yeah, they yeah. Were like running around on tour, yeah, um, going city to city and stuff. I really enjoyed that because they would, you know, that's you know, that's just been, if you're an artist, you enjoy seeing other artists, you know, do artist things sometimes. Yeah, so, um, um, that was my favorite. I don't know what episode was that. Um, more the when they were on like tour, tour. I think that was like maybe seven. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's eight. Like eight. So eight. Uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> Yeah, because Attila showed so up in nine. Labels. labels, label, but it was labels, man, because labels is when he was going through the label shit. But I right. felt like the tour episode was a little before that. I could be wrong. No, I think it's um, the same episode. He mm -hmm. just doesn't get. Uh... You don't get canned in that, in that right. labels right. episode. He gets right. canned. Okay, gotcha. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Gotcha. So my favorite is is the last episode for some of the reasons you already mentioned. You know that build up and the in the pace of it. Um. The way it ended for me was perfect because it definitely left you with it definitely left you in a place where they could pick up and do a season two and it would be dope. It wasn't an annoying cliffhanger and without seeing them completely form, it still was a nice solid end to the story. The, again, if there is no second season coming, because like you said uh, a couple of times, but that's it just my hasn't hit, been any, any, you know, word of it. But you that's, know. that's my that's my hitch and I know it's coming up early in the discussion What's but if they didn't have any assurance of a second season do y'all not feel it's a curious ending cliffhanger notwithstanding the cliffhanger doesn't make business to me it's just mm -hmm. the sense of, of accomplishment so by them running not even getting to 36 not even like answering the phone when Steve Rifkin called and then maybe going to black mm -hmm. don't y'all think it was curious that they ended it like this like a fable you know as opposed to the big win at the at the end of the series I think, honestly, just seeing the growth of the characters for me was fulfilling enough. Seeing Ray come back to his family, seeing Meth and Ray even be able to be in the same room with each other and, you know, respect each other's ability on the mic and be cool. Um, seeing uh, Deck get pulled in, you know, and um, <clears throat> just watching them record that song was ill. The Seven, seven chamber. Oh, yeah, seven chamber. Oh, seven chamber. Watching them break those yeah. verses up as they're you know as different points in the story as they were moving through the episode. That shit was amazing. That shit was uh, amazing. And it was funny because um, I don't know if it was right before but that then episode. They, did they write it? Did they write it knowing they were gonna? You know what I'm saying? I think they wrote it knowing with... they're gonna end it before. Well, all right, let me yeah. let me let me tell you why I'm so curious. My friend, she thinks because it's in the same year, it's kind of in accordance with the documentary. The documentary starts when they make 36. It, the documentary pretty much starts right after this this series. Interesting. Um, in terms of um the in terms of the crime on the cr chronology cr chronology. Sorry. There you go. But and you know, in any Wu head. 
or any any light Wu fan knows that they never really talk about this period of time in their life, mm-hmm. except in like the Tao Wu book. So if you're not like if you're not a RZA fan, you're not reading that stuff. But because mm-hmm. it is a RZA book, it, it says Wu. But so this is like the untold pieces. Yeah. But I still think it's you know like without them getting a win and ending it right there. I, when I was watching it in the beginning, remember I was complaining about pace because I was like, where are they gonna end up? Are they gonna do a time jump? Are they gonna right. you know turn in thirty six like? Even Shorty running around saying she managed them. She didn't even meet them yet. So it was pretty interesting mm-hmm. to me. Um, a very interesting artistic choice. And this is how I'm thinking more. If you have your, um, and this is only because I really cleaned up my room, cleaned up my crib, and I have things organized now. So you have your DVDs next to each other, right? Mm-hmm. So you have your woo section. And you have your um, you have your super bootleg, like maybe a Killer Army something, maybe a promo from a couple of albums. Then you have like your woo documentaries. Then you have the one that came out this year, Mike's and Men, maybe it's one disc, or maybe it's a couple of discs in there. And then you have this one season and you slide that in. Like I'm just thinking of it as an Is addition to a woo collection. Yeah, right. I don't think it's insufficient, but it's just curious that that would be an, an addition. You see what I'm saying? If they don't go for another season, that's what I'm talking about. If they don't go for season two and three or whatever, I think this it's should written... be one solo disc. I think it's written to have a second season. This isn't the end of their story. It's not even all the way the beginning no, but, of their but, story, right? So, But we know in modern television, sometimes you know about the second season even before the first we season. Do. Or we the, do. In the midst, you get those news. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we do. We definitely do. But that doesn't happen with everything, you know? Like, mm, we yeah. don't know every single show that's renewed already. Maybe right. it's still a conversation. And you're, um, you're talking to a Hannibal fan. Where we were on the edge of our seats, literally every season, waiting to see who we were there. <laughs> it's Will true. It no, we, we got advanced. We got advanced word on the third season because that was Red Dragon. So once we got to that part, everybody was like, "Oh, cool, they can do it." But everybody was waiting for us to do Silence of the Lambs, and there was no word through every right. season, and there was a whole campaign, so it never came to fruition. So it's not. So it's not. You know. Right. So. Um, well, with I the just, boys, I just got going through those moments. With the boys, we didn't know there was going to be a second season until after it was done but like immediately based on the um the reaction to the first season they announced that second season it seemed like a week yeah, same after thing with house concluded on, house on Haunted hill is one see it's literally after one book so it, you know. mm-hmm. but um the boys um mm, mm, um mm. wow mm. Sounds mm-hmm. like we need to sound like we need to do a sh- sound like we need to do a show because the boys was mm-hmm. magnificent. We can't. He mm-hmm. said, "No, no, uh, we do It wasn't magnificent. No, it wasn't." <laughs> okay, Watchmen. we're going to Watchmen. reel Watchmen it is in. Magnificent. Here's yes, the thing. Man. Yes, House Marm. Thank you. Watchmen is magnificent. Is all I'm saying. You want to talk magnificent? See, y'all need to be watching Watchmen. Are we, we, watching we are. Watchmen? We are we watching, watching Watchmen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and we know what we know. This is Watchmen from the comic book, the yes. graphic novel. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Moving on. I'm good, Mark. I'm good now. <laughs> okay. I'm good. We'll move forward uh, all the way away. Okay. From For all of it. All of it. Your favorite episode. Uh, my favorite episode was also the touring episode, mm. and and Castro, I think it was episode nine then that they were touring because that's when they come back. And they get the deal taken. He gets the deal taken, right? That's why I feel like the tour was the episode right before that because it was still a happy episode. That deal being pulled didn't come until they got back. Right. Yeah. And, you know, but, he, um, no, no. Well, well the, he was going through the thing and I'm pulling the record off the show. Like, I, I think the touring episode. Episode he was against, eight well, that we thought it was is, is when he does the video. They tour after the video. Oh, they tour after and, the video. And okay, what, so what's that episode clear, closes on the video, right? Right, so I'm thinking the, the tour. Video. Vid- I was thinking yeah. the video, the video episode was the tour episode. That was You're rough. Right. So I just had it mixed. Yeah, up. they're separate. Yeah, um, I think we have all decided to collectively forget about the video episode. Man, maybe that was uh, rough. the whole, the, not the episode itself, but man, it was a lot going on. No, I don't remember. This is I, first of all. Let's talk the video. I don't remember him in the tux part because the video wasn't popular when it came out. At all. So if you saw it, you saw that first verse. I know the first verse of him in line talking to the girls. And you knew, like, more, uh, 
I'm not saying you're younger, but like me and him, you knew that song. I, I you am heard much the younger, melody. Yes. <laughs> you said, I am you, much you, younger. So you could sing it. Like we all knew it kind of. You could sing, oh, we love you, rock. Cause of the oh. hook. But it wasn't a popular song that no. I even remember the video. And literally no. it was not. And it kind of got buried. It didn't get played on video music box. And like they weren't playing it like that. It wasn't getting run. Well, it was a bad song, um, yeah. number one. And he knew <laughs> yes. that. If, if yes. the retelling of this is accurate at all, he knew that was not a good record. Yes. They changed mm-hmm. the way that. And they, yeah, they took the beat the away. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, he but knew. My thing. This is what I thought wasn't unrealistic. They put all that money, and I could, you know, I'm being naive. This is the '80s. They put all that money into the record, but didn't clear the sample first. Did, oh yeah, did you, you know, did you have to do it backwards? Yeah, that, yeah. That I think that time sense. frame. Mm-hmm. They were doing that in the '90s. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that time yeah. frame, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look yeah, at uh, Pharrell yeah. Munch. Yeah, no, but yo, Pharrell, the Pharrell Munch story. A little side note. It was an opportunity. All I would say is they ended up paying that Japanese company upwards of 50 grand when they when they were negotiating. And, you know, Rockets was printing money back then. Yes. The initial were. deal, they could have got they could have got the sample for five grand. They were willing to let them have it for five grand. But Rock was like, fuck that. We, ain't, we don't need to do that. Fuck them. And then and then the money got higher and higher to the point they had to pull the record. He was in debt. And it turned in like upwards of fifty grand when they when they started, they could have paid five grand. And Morgan, I'm just saying this because Rockets could afford that. They were paying underground artists ten grand a record for a twelve inch. So they could have paid that and Farrell lost out on mad money. Because not just the lawsuit, but it's it's that the song would be playing at every football yeah, stadium yep. every week. Yeah. It would be one of those black IP stage staples. They play it all the time. The licensing alone. Yeah. Could have put it in a new movie. Any of these new Godzilla movies could have had his song as a theme. If they did what it right. song is it that we're talking about? Uh, get the fuck out. Oh, okay. um, Simon yeah, Says. Okay. Simon Says. Okay. Yeah. Oh. They just recently, and not and, and, and not coincidentally, we're talking about it. Five or so days ago, just now, went up on streaming sites, Eternal Affairs. Fine, yeah, like after yeah. like 20, 10, 10 years ago, 20 so, years ago, something like that. It's so, just, yeah. The mm-hmm. sample's referring to, it's, it's a Japanese sample from a Godzilla movie. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Had he just cleared it. And it's obvious. It's so obvious. And they yes. Cleared yeah. it. And they could have cleared it with it because it's obvious. Pay the five grand. Right. Oh, oh man. I'm and more of the way we do the math, oh, Farrell lost on Whew. lost out on a hundred to five hundred grand. That that song would have easily generated that much money. Back then, yeah. The, the, that, yep. like, you're right. That would have been like some NFL license stuff. It would have been millions. Yeah. Definitely been millions. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay, it so, a staple song. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so cheesiest moment. Cheesiest moment. I Castor, feel like you have a laundry <laughs> list. Yeah. yeah. You got to hit us with some of yours. Cause... Okay. Um, break it down for me. Help me out. The episode that Hayes died, is that in this back? No, yeah. but we uh, that in the no, first Hayes half. died in the first half. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But we're talking but we're talking about cheesiest moments the whole series, right? These sure, questions go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So and uh, um very reminiscent of um Tom Hanks's um Oscar turn in Forrest Gump. Um <laughs> our lovely Wu Tang American saga tried a similar moment um during a tense scene with one of their childhood heroes and friends. It's choked out by the police. A pigeon decides to take a circuitous oh. uh, route <laughs> oh, no. when flying away. And and this route includes all eight members of the clan that were happily around. The pigeon flies over to the fire escape, flies to somebody's window, flies to the roof where Raekwon is. What? Oh, my God. That is, no, but that's not the cheesiest moment. That's actually my I was mind. like, that I was a raven. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, we a, wouldn't be mad if that happened Morgan, in Game was, of Thrones. Hmm. No, Morgan, it was a pigeon. It was New York. The first one was a pigeon. Well, first of all, <laughs> yeah, setting all. different setting. Does, They're not in Westeros, but um, no way. First of all, pigeons have missions and directions. <laughs> They're not flying around trying to be poetic and dramatic. They trying to you know hunt, seek, and kill. They got they got their the map cheesiest quest moment point. are the spontaneous and so natural hmm. inferences. Within the script oh. of how a Wu member gets his name. Yo, you always looking out the window. Yo, you be like an inspector or something. <laughs> or, 
Or <laughs> when Ghostface goes and steals back the music from Attila. Oh man, how'd you get it? Yo, I was in and out like a ghost. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> that shit was or, hard. <laughs> my personal all-time fave. Oh god. When Power and Raekwon are in the spot cooking up crack. He looks into the pot and he says, "Yo, you like a chef with this shit, son." <laughs> But Yo. he was cooking. Chefs cooked. That okay, wasn't first of all, hard. I have to tell you that honestly, when I watched that writing. scene, I thought of you. I thought of you when he said you're like a chef. Like, oh wow, that one. This yep. is where screenwriting and nuance is is, is priceless. This is oh. when you, you're paying these people to write these things to make it seem like it's naturally occurring. Right. I'm surprised that meth didn't fall when his leg was broke. Yo, man, you need to find another method to walk. <laughs> No, they, they spared us with that. But I, you know what, coming, though? Coming in season two. I would love that they done it for Method. I would have loved that they done it for Method Man because that shotgun shit is driving me nuts. So they just did his name and started calling him. You ready for the butterfly effect? Panty need Raider. Be- I need something. Call something. him the Panty Raider, Shake Kwan, Johnny anything. Blaze, anything but that shotgun thing. Like, Didn't they do a Johnny Blaze reference, worked. though? They did. Yeah. They did. They did a. They did. They did. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Lord. They did. Yeah, so, uh, I bet you look. Look. They probably had like. Look. They probably had some of the script written up on like dry erase boards and shit for like readings and stuff. Oh, right. I sure. bet you every time the fucking Wu name came out, it was written in like super gold. They had mathematics coming tagged. No. <laughs> no. <by> mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> they got mathematics. Yo, math. Yo, right chef, right here, dog. Chef, yo, all over the script pages. I can't wait. I man. cannot. Oh my god. That is the cheesiest moment. But those those <laughs> moments, it just was like they just didn't have any um no grace in mm. in naming them or showing you know the names popping up. Some of the themes, a lot of the stuff was a little heavy handed. You know, first time and stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's mine. Uh, my cheesiest moment is just it. I don't know if it's true or not, so maybe it's not cheesy. Uh, but it is not believable to me <laughs> that Riza shot Attila. I just don't believe it. <laughs> the shit ain't happened. And okay, if it did, well, hold on, hold think, on, please. Yeah, and if it yeah. did, it sure as shit didn't happen the way that they just portrayed that to us. <laughs> my man hid behind a dumpster. <laughs> The gun God. was heavier than he is. He could barely hold it up. <laughs> like, what is happening? He stood there like he pissed himself before he shot it, even before he even pulled it out. Oh man! Like I'm just okay. not. I'm not it buying is, it. It. Well, it is well known within Wu lore that um, Rizza caught a case the last time he was down in Ohio. So I think they're just kind of wrapping the Attila thing into him being in trouble with the law. It's well right, known that stuff. he caught a case, and that's why he went to Ohio. Do we know what the case was that he caught? No, no. Oh yeah, attempt. Yeah, yeah, attempted murder. Right. Like he shot somebody. He got off. So I'm not sure if the case was in Ohio. When it, I'm pretty sure it was down there because they were doing drugs. They were dealing drugs down there. But he had gotten caught, and he really was almost about to go up for like a murder charge. Oh, when I he see. Got cleared, when he a- okay, so they he... put some stories together here mm-hmm. to make some yeah. fashion. Yeah, Ohio case. got it. Because when he got cleared, he went right back and did. When he got cleared, when he got off, he uh-huh. went right back and started Wu Tang immediately. Like that was like the last mm-hmm. category. Like he just started well, he was... no more like pump faking, like you know, on the series or anything like that. Okay, he knew but, yeah, Bobby um... Digital Destiny at that point. <laughs> yeah, it's better than his than his Bobby Dynamite. Dub Destiny. Hey, he knew it was yeah. Bobby Destiny. Dynamite works way better than Bobby Digital. Damn. Sorry. No. Bobby Digital. <laughs> Digital. Digital. Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. Yo. See what I mean? I'd rather hear some Dynamite. But that's the thing. Like, So remember when you were asking us before, was he really this awkward back then? Babe, like he would yell digital like that and think that was cool. And it's like, why are you doing this? Into- All I'm hearing is he's on the spectrum, and that's fine. <laughs> and that, I think right. maybe we should nah, just be I, able to celebrate that then instead of that. calling being him just adult, awkward. Because, fam, this is being more an adult, than awkward. Yes, yeah, he probably was on the spectrum. Like, uh, the funny thing about Rizza is he had that weird way of speaking. And I, before I saw him, like in person, like more times, I used to think, because I knew they always rock fronts. I used to think he was around with his front end. In particular, 
Right. 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 It's definitely um, like everything's too big in his mouth. The All the words are too big. Yeah. yeah. But, but is he weird because if you break it down phonetically on some MC shit, he is actually enunciated. Mm. But it sounds like he's muffled. But he actually pronounces all of the, you know, he don't slur. He pronounces all of the syllables and the words. So, like, it sounds intelligent, but, you know, he's talking like this. So he used to think it was that, but he was really saying all the words. He didn't, like, skip words. You know, Raekwon, like, like, you know, styling they'll just slide through words and shit rizza didn't and um his style was so unique to that but yeah he probably was on the spectrum yeah he would take he's always like that like that fallopian tube was. song is not was <laughs> is well see, gotcha. that fallopian tube song that's real more <laughs> so real. then that like that's <laughs> proof for, for what i'm saying <laughs> yeah that's a real song that's his, that's his love that that's rizza he thought a love song would be that like he really thinks <laughs> so, that. i mean i think that all i think we're doing it right now just i'm, I'm gonna really get the ladies yeah. with this one this is my honey love. Yo, this is, That's you know, it. And I mean, you know, I mm. doubt that um all the lights in the world d- dropped every time he was talking knowledge with another five percenter, but you know, for it, like, yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> cheesiest moment. <laughs> there we go. No, what, che- what, what, cheesiest. What, 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 just moment. ice. Yeah. Just ice creating the Wu Tang. <laughs> what's the knowledge today? What's the mathematics today? God lights drop center. Solo <laughs> um, yo, that's it right there. Getting embarrassed by just ice with a solo spotlight. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. That. Oh, that's that's the that's the um. What's what's that famous play? Uh, the salesman. Death of the salesman. That's death of the salesman, salesman. all day. Drop <laughs> all light, center, center solo, bang. Uh, <laughs> all eyes yeah, on you, kid. Moment. That was a moment. <laughs> yeah. What, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be, shorty? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. When they were trying to be dramatic, it was not a, a good sight. But when right. they had other moments, it would definitely work. Like, I agree. That kind of drama right wasn't all right. Wasn't uh, portrayed well. This is gonna be a Tim Jacob moment, son. This is what we really went through. <laughs> When I found out that his seed was going to be my seed and we was going to build in the family, I was just a lyric. But it came out to be true because we the gods. <laughs> Signed the RZA. Okay. All I was, all I was thinking about, Borg, I was thinking about like, yeah, if, uh, if Dennis is on this bus to Ohio, who's picking his, his brothers up from school that day? Fam. Oh, no. Fam. That's what I, that was Same. all I was thinking about when they were on the bus. I was like, yo, are they sitting on the curb? Are they rolling backwards? And they locked the okay. wheels on. All right. Uh, Goodbye. You got to work. Yeah, d- shut it down. What? No. <laughs> we're done. I just, I just want to make sure they're not rolling. Wow. Who is picking yeah. them up? No, I definitely thought about that. Oh, Dennis. It ain't they mama. Well, you know what? She... <laughs> <laughs> but she set him she sent him on his way the way she started treating him at the end of the series yeah she sent him on his way he didn't deserve that shit okay so you sold my hammer but did you give me the money for it oh no she that right you she sold it on some that, old, him, it, it, she, that was a complicated relationship he is like and be, man don't forget back then he's grown he probably needs a job at that point in time it's rent control so he, he was he was helping That's out with all. the bread we've always seen him helping oh, yeah. with the bread you know what i'm saying Help yeah, out with yeah, his yeah. with his brothers, but, but um, again, that that was happening, but that was unnatural. Sixteen, seventeen year olds shouldn't be like sure. worried about supporting the family at all. So you know, I just think the the mom thing, I think it was complicated. I get it. Her selling the ham, ham. You know, if you, I'm just saying this more from growing up in projects and apartments. If your mom found some drugs, she's gonna sell it. If she found it, you know, she gonna sell right. it. Don't yeah, have things this shit in my things, As a matter you know of fact. Mean? Things like that would just disappear, and then you don't get to ask about it. You assume your parent did nope. whatever they just did. Know it, know your parents. You just, found. Yeah, you're they not even flush having it that. Sell it. Yeah, you're not having that conversation. Yeah. You know. And I would be mad if they flush it. I would hope they go sell it. Like <laughs> shit, at least. But I, I'm not getting a piece of that bread. Shit. Wow. Uh, I'm so you, not, not, you guys, this didn't happen to me. I'm just saying. You guys right. covered the uh, cheesiest moments. Let's hop into the gulliest moment. Wait, you said your cheesiest moment? Is? Well, I feel like you got both of them. I feel like you guys nailed it because the definitely the bird was like that was dumb cheesy. Um, like More as so we were watching the, um, it, animated, the animated <laughs> clips of the, of the so drug the animated selling. clips <laughs> of the drug selling. Now I want to look back and double check. No, the second batch worked 
The second batch to me worked yeah. dramatically more than that first batch. The first batch, I was like, whoa, what are we watching? Like, I didn't know what, I, I thought it was going to come out from a video game. It just, yeah, it was, it was jarring. Yeah. But the second time worked, yeah. Someone said that they they switched directors um, with a couple of the different episodes. Mm. Or switched directors or switched writers. I can't remember. But that that's why mm. some of the episodes had different paces and it was done purposely. So I, I want to go back and double check oh. that. I didn't get a chance to. But yeah, yeah, the uh, rewatch should be pretty interesting. Hell yeah, I'm anxious. Uh, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm anxious for a rewatch, especially now that all the episodes are out. Just binge and watch it straight through. Like, yeah, I'm definitely. It, it, I'm not used to having to wait for a lot of the for the things that we normally cover for the podcast. We're not used to having to wait. Yeah, you know, right? You know, Game yeah. of Thrones is yeah. the one thing that we were like, fine, we'll, we'll, you can make us wait for this. You know, we'll, right? We'll, we'll do it. Yeah, all. I mean, we'll we do don't do many time. serial shows. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things. Yeah. Morgan, what's your gulliest moment? I don't know. Uh, you have so many to pick. I could jump in. I, I could grab them yeah, while you think about yeah, it. Thank you. The gulliest moment to uh-huh. me, to me, fam. <laughs> so extra mm-hmm. was that funeral. That was the gulliest moment to me. Oh, Dennis flipped out. I was at like, the funeral. Yeah. Yo, listen, listen, the listen, funeral. listen, listen, listen. It's one or two. Listen. Art. It's one or two. It's one or two. I got two. I got two. And they're both Dennis. <laughs> they're both Dennis. Well, they should be. You said yeah. gulliest moment. Gulliest. Dennis at the funeral. Dennis at the video shoot. That's Ooh, fame. Dennis at the video shoot. Ooh. At the video shoot, he was out of pocket. You got your little backup dancer with you? Oh, he was out of pocket. The way he was holding that bottle, too. backup dancer. With your Stapleton homies is here. Yes. He was wild out. I mean, one great thing, you never, you know, had to guess how he felt about the situation. You never you, had you to guess. You knew for sure that Dennis was upset. He wore it on his sleeve. So this oh is what happened. God. This is what happened. As that was playing out. And after the episode, I remember saying to Morgan, yo, I totally forgot, like, how severe and how, like, real that beef was. Like, that's that was like, RZA shouldn't have been able to just be like, y'all get over it. Nah, this nigga shot his crib up. Well, let's go to the actual gulliest moment. Raekwon shooting up Dennis's house. <laughs> yeah. In the first fucking but episode, I have a problem with that moment because I still don't know if that was real or not. Like, but right, we, what the beat is. Well, for, for the sake of the, for the, for the sake of the, the series, is, though. It, all right, it was representing Park Hill versus Stapleton. And okay. when you have beef neighborhood wise, you might not know those motherfuckers because there's no reason for you to know them because you have beef with them, even generationally. But sure. if you see them, it's on. So, like, you know, I, but actually, tell y'all the truth. Sorry, I did watch a Papa Wu thing. That is true, but it was more like power and Raycon. Oh, um, shit. Close to yeah, so, um, oh, shit. Yeah. Well, but that's what was portrayed was power and Raekwon shooting up his crib. No, but when I first well, saw no, it, no, no, it, no. It, but it, I just it, need it was... you to understand the way you tried to spin that. <laughs> You said, right, I look, still have problems with it because illusion. I don't know how true it is. Okay, I did watch a Papa Wu thing, and it was basically exactly like this. <laughs> oh, you yeah. think Papa Wu is not an exaggerator? Papa Wu speaks. Yeah, he okay. does. All right, well, you, you all know right what? let me stop. Okay, I'll okay. stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm, I'm talking both sides of my mouth. I'll stop. There we go. Good job. Good Self reflection is key on a Monday. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, but this is my thing. <laughs> this is, this no is one where likes the, it this, when I say this that. disbelief comes. Not necessarily if it happened or not, but because the reality of them two being so tight in the crew, this nigga just used to shoot me. I'm just not going to be twin spirits with him when we combine. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I think that's... So to me... I might hang out with Beck. That's if why that. If that like, ends up being true, right. that is Raekwon's superpower. I mean, uh, Riz's superpower was to be able to bring them together. That would be incredible. But here's so the thing. Here's the, wait, 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 guys. Let me, let me break wait. it down real quick. Real quick, though. No, wait, wait, wait. Okay, all right. Let me just lay it out flat. Okay. They're not just members of the Wu. Ray and Ghost are like twin peas. That's what's like they're like twin souls. So how would you get to that? Okay, because you're already that, that right? So here's so here, if here, you're a twin soul, you're already that. So here's the thing: we some keep, part of it. We it, keep yeah. saying if, right? As if we don't know. We've already confirmed that the shooting happened, and we know because yeah. we know the woo today, and for however they've been, however long they've been on, these guys are peas in the pod. So there's no if this. 
No, this actually happened, and this is why we need seasons two and three. On some real shit. We need we need, we need this, the rest of the season to make it how work. How can you combine these? It's like it's like they're like Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff, but in the wool. Mm-hmm. But they used to shoot at each other. That's <laughs> where I'm like, oh my god! Like I'm with I you. See, I'm, yeah. I'm all about. I'm I'm with them joining on. I'm with them. You know, maybe they on I was, like the crew was split up. You know, certain ways and shit like that. Right. Certain people clicked up and probably work with each yeah. other more than others. But them two. It's crazy. They're like right, black glove right, black glove left. Like you but know, Raekwon made an effort to, for Ghostface to co-star. Like that's not a Raekwon solo album. It just is because that's what they told us. It's right, Wu Tang album. Right, starring Raekwon, co-starring Ghostface. Yeah, and they even worked on those albums. Those first, those, that first run of albums, more they all worked together on some like uh, chronic type shit. Yeah, they all worked together on those first three albums. Yeah. Like everybody was around. Then, then they started to play them. So. I, I think it's just an amazing that that is a musical achievement that needs to be like verified think, and echoed. I think the point is yeah. that's the kind of thing you can't write. Like that mm, story mm. is an unbelievable story, right? For every single okay. episode, every single episode, I said to Ambush, "How are they? When do they become <laughs> friends? Then, because none of this makes sense. Like she there was did. never there." There was never a let up. Like Dennis was never like, I mean, I ain't really tripping. It's been a right. minute. Nope. You know what I even mean? Even when they like, all teamed up, even when even when Meth and Ray teamed up from their early little, they didn't have right. beat, but they just weren't hitting the same frequency. Right. right. Even they went to the studio at the end. No Dennis. Right. Like uh. still like. Right. You know. But again, so that's my thing. So, it, it for me that yeah. makes it either that it's not true at all, right? Yeah. Or that that's that's the true fucking gem of how they come together is whatever we're going to find out. I can't wait to see what that is. And I in the, and wait. in that event, if we that, ever get it, that is going to be the gulliest moment of any show. That's going to be a Cause gulliest. this shit don't make no fucking sense. I don't think sense. they're going to give us that. What could I possibly think, pull them? They kind of have to. They kind of have to. For them to hold on to a couple of gems and still be mysterious. Well, the next season could definitely start. They made 36 and just jump. That's the one thread. I know the ghost face thread is hanging. So here's but, but too big of a thread. They can, they can start too big of a thread so for me. And so, I'm not a woo okay, head like I, you. I That's agree. way but too big see, of a thread. See, so here, here, but here. you can see every other, every other dot is every other T is crossed to jump time, except ghost. So here, you can jump time with all the rest of them. Here's the thing though. Here's the thing though. With the way they've been pacing it and the, the characters that they've given us outside of the woo, it, wouldn't serve them right to do a jump because honestly like what my favorite character is sheree right i was gonna say sheree, sheree would have what the two, two babies yeah. by yeah. then exactly you know what i'm saying like, so you can't skip over yeah, this. the fact, yeah, yeah, the yeah, fact that point, you know what i'm saying so this is it's a really excellent opportunity to pick up the second season with them in ohio and that whole life and that whole situation and then kind of like what they did with master and none where he started overseas and then he came right back, back to you but all the press we saw was them shooting overseas. So it was right. like, is the whole season going to be over there? My only, <clears throat> my only concern with that, Am, is mm. narratively and for this as a story that I would love that. But as far as the music of Wu Tang part, that would be kind of dry because Riz is not there. Right. I mean, it, you know, who, who knows what the fuck they would be doing in New York? Probably not anything. But that's I was a, surprised no, that no, I saw no. Raekwon recording with somebody else. At all, that, uh, I no, never even I think, knew he recorded. I feel like he didn't um, have a choice. Yeah, but I to think record I think with. this would give us an opportunity to see what was happening with the rest of the members in New York. It still gives us an opportunity to see other rappers that they came up with their interactions. Like it could be a crazy second season with the different things that are going on with everybody else. Plus, we still didn't get Master Killer. We didn't get like Cap. So let me ask you this: Did y'all yet. see? Did did y'all see Master Killer's name at the end? I did the, see that. You know, they have the, right. His name was on it. So you saw his name at in the terms of the contributors. Or yeah. Executive. You know, they have another line of executive producers that were all the Wu members. Yeah. And so I thought that was curious. So check this out. My friend said, and I hope, I hope y'all can help me, mm-hmm. that Jizza handed Master Killer that his CD at the end. That, that was Master Killer. She said either she saw that in the credits or it, was a, or it said Master on the table or something like that. The y'all, the y'all, oh, y'all outside, oh, outside, outside the record store. Yeah, when when he was reminiscing uh, and disappointed by his CD. Yeah, when he passed that dude the CD, she says that was Master Killer. 
I think that would be a really I gotta, last I got to rewatch it, check that out. I got to watch it again. That was Master Killer. Was there was any dope. Master Killer? Did, was there any reference? Did Jizza make a note of? Did anybody bring him up at all? No, nah, there's no mention. See, I'm, there's no so mention. I think that's strange that he's an executive producer. I know he, he probably knew the timeline, but yeah. just, just the way they stuffed all the other shit in, they could have stuffed his shit in there. So, they could have made a reference. like is, Now, okay. All right, yeah, no, that could work. That could work. We could really get Killer in the second season. We can get, you know, Donna out of jail and, you know. Because I that. would love this, y'all. I would love a whole Master Killer episode based on him working on that verse for oh, um, Shadowboxing. Jesus. Because the, the thing was, Mark, he, he had, there was a slot open. And he this is his first round he ever wrote. He just kept working on it and working on it working on it. It, we blew out the like there was other cats in there mm-hmm. when Chip Stain probably um, mm-hmm. sixty second probably was around like I'm talking like Wizards Brothers and like mm-hmm. family members that were all rappers back then there was spots if you notice um, in Wu Records there'll be spots somebody gets four bars mm-hmm. and you never hear from them again yep. right the okay yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying like um, there's one infamous one on a really oh, I can't remember his name uh, uh, Buddha Monk I think mm-hmm. has like four bars just on a song. He doesn't mm-hmm. come back. Or it's like six months, like off. They cut him off and he don't come back. Um, so I thought the way they did Method Man's episode, I would love a Master Killer episode. And then at the end of that episode, showing him Work on ready and laying that verse and, yeah. and then being inducted into the Man, list. listen, I'm telling you, there is so much to mm-hmm. work with. Like, And I, I, I'm going to say this. This is not me. on. I'm giving you all the disclaimer. This is not me on any level comparing it to say it's as great, I'm just saying they could give us they could give us an equal amount of seasons to the wire with this story. They really could. Right. Like, there, there's so many different ways to hit this story and tell the story of so many they different members. They would have members. to stop at Wu forever. Because, stop yeah, there. yeah. Because cause at that point, I mean, think about it. We're talking about, once you, I was listening to uh, your, your, the other podcast, um, Call Out Culture. And shout out. Shout out Call Out Culture Call Podcast. Up. And um you guys were it was the Black Thought episode, but mm-hmm. you you guys were cracking some jokes about some of the Wu affiliates to Alaska, I remember. And um and mm-hmm. maybe maybe, it was, maybe I was a different episode of yours I was listening to. In any event, you guys were talking uh, about we were the talking Wu affiliates. About Wu affiliates. Yeah, <laughs> and, I um, to come up on a number of episodes. Right. Mm-hmm. And now it's easy for us to like for them to be like a you know a, a a slither in our memory. But back then, like Killer Priest was huge. Like there was no confusion mm-hmm. about how dope he was and how integral he was to the Wu. You mentioned Buddha Monk because the Wu co-sign was so heavy. We believe anybody they brought with them. Right. Think about it. Killer like, Army. Y'all brought nine motherfuckers to start. Come on, dog. Like the the sheer number of the, the initial. Yeah. Group. Y'all bring nine yeah. motherfuckers. Oh, so everybody y'all bring, you know what I'm saying? Most right. groups, three, four, maybe. Right. Y'all brought nine. So that means anybody that y'all say, oh, they, Too they many. Two, they're <laughs> of that ilk. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm sorry, more yeah. I mean, I'm Nothing. Kidding. She was joking. She said, too many. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Killer no, Army, that's what all the Sons of Man, uh, they, a lot of Dark Man. Like, there was a lot. There was a lot. A lot of dark. L A D, and that's the that's the oh see that's the wave that got established. I'm talking this shorty shit shit stage, sixty right. second assassin, right? Um, uh, Dreddy Kruger, who yeah. ended up being a great executive the producer. Great diggers? Of the the fact that they gave us the Prince Paul off, disciple. Come on, that was you know, great. He's crazy now. They gave us Prince Paul in the video uh, episode. True Master. Yeah, True Master. that was the. Okay. All right, all right, all right. No, True Master really lost his mind. He, he really, he really like literally lost his mind. Yikes. Um, but fourth disciple, yeah. Anyway, it's it's endless. Like they're, they're, uh don't get me thought about Black Knights and yeah. North Star and all that other shit. And, Did you guys um, give your gulliest the, moments? Oh, All right. Who's the guy that cut his penis off? Um, nope. <laughs> Would you say more? Which say? which which affiliate is it that cut his penis off and then jumped off a balcony? What's his oh, name? Oh, um. Oh, uh, that was um. Oh shit, yeah, that wasn't when somebody did that. Um, <laughs> he wasn't in one of the. I groups, think that's though. like a third. Of, he's a wolf. Like affiliate. a third tier cat. Yeah, he's not a group cat. It's it's a third tier cat oh, though. Um, 
And you know what? He got initiated. Yeah, he got branded. Up. It was all sorts that's of what? shit. Y'all ain't gonna try and kick him out the group. No, we ain't kicking him out. We just dick off. We just saying. We just saying. You got the woo. the first tier. Second tier is like sons of man, killer priest, killer army. Third tier is like, and there's a whole another tier. It's like, yeah, um, uh, dark, right. the dark nights. Um, well, we're gonna take this moment. Lot I'm gonna of find dark that dude real quick, and because <laughs> I watched a, a <laughs> no, I watched a little a, like a twenty minute documentary oh, on that guy. It. Now you right, lie a second, lie a second. You right, lie a second. Well, t- l- let me just give oh, you. Wait, what wait. The, no, this is like this is a fourth tier member. What's his name? Okay, well, let me just give you the headline. She then. got it. Let me give you two. Okay. <laughs> One, Wu Tang rapper who cut off penis and jumped off balcony wants to do porno. Oh God! And then the other one. <laughs> oh, Christ Bearer from North Star. Why I cut yeah. off my oh, own my penis? God. Rapper who used a steak knife for botched DIY vasectomy. Oh. It wasn't a vasectomy. That's completely different than taking your penis. Christ off. Bearer. I'm sorry. And you said his name was who? Christ Bearer. He was he part of which group? North Star. But wait, they. North Star. That's definitely um, fourth tier. That's definitely Wu Tang Clan it, associated rapper Rizzo. cuts off penis, jumps off building, and suicide yeah, he try. Was, <laughs> he was Rizzo. What? He was early. He was an early. He was an early West Coast signing. He was one of the West Coast cats, okay. and he was Rizzo's right hand man when he was out there. Don't try to put um, but on check this, Morgan says the Wu Tang affiliate whose penis was never at any point detached from his body. Right. I. But, Yikes! But it was but the, hanging, and he jumped. Okay, he tried to like cut his penis off. Through. Right, he didn't get the whole thing off oh, and got it attached. Like it's dangling. It's no, I mean it's back now. No, like, when I'm saying at the time it was dangling, and then he jumped out a window. Y- indeed. God. I mean, basically, so he got halfway. He got but, frustrated oh, with the attempt and was like, "Fuck it." Basically, he was but like. Also, they say um, Killer Priest. Called him an official kill, um, Wu Tang Killer Bees on video in 2012, but the Wu Tang uh, Incorporated said this motherfucker never ain't heard of him. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> never it, it always, heard of it him. always boiled they down to Wu nope. Incorporated, which is basically yeah, power and uh, that was power, yeah, power divine. Power divine. I was just gonna Wu say, so that's like, Wu Incorporated, yes. and they just like never heard of him. Yes, we don't know none about no 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 loony like that. You said he did what? We looking at oh, he's he from the West I mean, Coast. The, the, the oh, Japanese okay. market opens at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Divine and Powell get down. Hey, play. Oh, my God. They only worried about the market and the margins, man. Don't tell me about no dick cutter. And I don't yeah. know about that, dog. Yeah, basically, my man tried to cut it off and then couldn't get it all the way done and was like, fuck it, I've done this. I might as well die. He was like, I can't even cut my dick off right and just Jumps out the window. He, well, he what are we jumped still on gullies? <laughs> that's pretty really gullies. We're yeah. still on gullies. Well, that's the gulliest. First tier Wu Tang affiliate there. <laughs> not first tier. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my key over. takeaway. He is terrible. <laughs> my key takeaway is that they that she someone be, else said he's a part of them. She's Christ being slanderous. <laughs> there's so many there's so many problems with that. He called himself Christ Bear. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. All right. All right. It was the root of all his problems. We'll just leave it there. More yes. what is your gulliest moment, girl? I already gave my gulliest moments. Get Cash, yeah. you give yours? Oh, yeah. No, mine is um when Raekwon finally um stopped being all scary and did his rap on the uh, basketball court. Mm. And it was like shit plow. Like that was just taking me there. I really like okay. the kid was doing. Okay. It. Those okay. I felt that was really sick. Yeah. All right. Uh, most nostalgic moment, Castro. What was your most nostalgic moment? Uh, it's two actually. It's um, one obviously when they did, when they were doing Seven Chamber. Yes. Um, and just seeing those verses fit properly, that was pretty dope. Um, but really when they did the credits and it was uh old dirty character um jizza and rizzas and they were practicing all, all together, together now, now. yeah and the, and the camera was spinning around because that routine is like influential they use that for like four hooks yeah in the first couple of songs and stuff and that's like that's like their family thing that really got it rocking so i, I really feel good about that moment yeah you, you, you got one over there mj nostalgic moment 
I think the tour because that I've lived that life, and so I was just really nostalgic about. No, I'm just joking. I don't. Have <laughs> I was like, okay, maybe. All right. I from, don't. I mean, I, from a production standpoint, she did live that life. Okay, <laughs> right. that's, that's a was, good point. That's okay, that's fair. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a nostalgic like I don't have it the way you guys do. Mm. I just like overall genre and an era mm. is dope to see. I got two. Um, uh, one of those which I, you know, you've already shared um, the Seventh Chamber recording, primarily um, Dex verse, because. When it happened, oh, Dex verse was killer. Yo, was and, and it was funny because me and Morgan were talking about that too. I said, she was like, I don't really think I remember Deck like that, and I was like, No, you know Deck verses, you just don't know it's Deck because Deck has had some of the most memorable verses. Like the way he comes in on some of these songs as that first verse, starting it off crazy. I'm like. Nah, you know some deck verses. You just probably don't remember. Yeah, deck is in the Hall of Fame for lead off hitting. Oh, like he has some of the best God. opening verses ever. Ever. It's just he deserves. It's just ever. Yeah. It's just um. And it's funny because his last he just dropped a record that was actually somewhat decent. The first album was really good. Was shit. The first for the it's, first no, album was good. Uncontrolled Joe. substance was yes. out of was no it was no. First of all, uh, he's deck. He should have been out in the first wave. He should. And have. they lost a lot of his stuff in the flood. Yeah, I did hear about and that. And yeah. that cover sucked. Okay, so slow I down. just thought it was a, a shitty ass. Sorry, it was a shitty rollout. <laughs> it was a shitty rollout, and I was like, he deserved better than that. He did deserve and, better, but there's um, some gems on there. He just definitely what like the most recent record. Um, what year did that drop? 97, 90, I gotta look it up. Look it All up. Right. That might have been like 90. Um, but he he came out in the second wave no more. He didn't come out in the first wave. Yeah, before. he came he sh- out in the second wave after the fl- yeah. Forever. And he a lot of his best verses are on Wu Tang. Some of those songs on Wu Tang Forever are his, like Little Drummer Boy and the other cities. Yeah. Like those are his songs. Yeah, that they made in the Wu songs. So yeah. I was, my point, I was just saying, is like he just dropped something decent. The Zarte stuff is like, ugh. but his yeah. last like four or five solo records are ass. They suck it's really bad. Whoa. 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 So my other, yeah, uh, no. my other uh, nostalgic. And more, go moment. look at his discography. I, I'm getting there. Go look at that. <laughs> his I'm other, my other, other nostalgic moment for me. Was RZA having difficulties with the sound man? That, oh yeah, you that were was having a, he yeah. was triggered. I was I was triggered. I was triggered. <laughs> he was upset. <laughs> the sound man ignoring you and shit and saying, "Oh, it's Whoa. already set for the first guy. <laughs> it's set for the headliner." Whoa. Calm yeah. down. He Those... told he told him, "Don't move around as much. Yeah. Just uh, stay in the middle." Yep. The other monitors aren't hooked up. What? They, uh, I hate. I hated the um. It's um. It's EQ for the headline, not for you. But like that with. whole relationship with the sound man. I'm like, I know you know that Castro. Like, and I was telling him like, yo, there's a clear difference the way they treated hip hop acts and rock acts. Like they really. They thought we didn't know we was that whole like putting the beat that. on so and then him and reading the paper. Like that's how they they will put they will put like for oh, sound God. checks. They would start our music and walk off and go do something. Wow. And it's like you need to well, mix my day, vocals. What are you doing? Right. Other day I had a I had a performance, me and Zilla um is at this coffee shop, but they have a performance space. Mm-hmm. So it was wireless mics, right? And Morg knows this, because y'all have even better technology when y'all do y'all production. <laughs> wireless mics ain't shit. Like it's not like they wireless mics have always been rolled out like it's the next tech. You right? know, no, not, no, you know what it is? You know what it is? Let me let me clear this up real quick. You get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. You get what yeah, you pay for. That's true. But no, but even so, I was working on these very high-end ones. They had solo phantom power batteries. You know, the big block of that. Mm-hmm. But here was the problem. <laughs> Me and Zilla are professionals. So as soon as, and, and we're and we're going to, and we're, we're a raging locomotive, meaning like once the train's on the track, we're rolling. Right. So if he hears that his mic is, is higher than mine and I can't hear that, I'm going to have a mic in my face before I even know it. We're going to trade mics. Right. So the sound men were yelling at us, stop passing mics. And we're like, Yo, we have to pass mics if one mic is failing and he's doing leads. It doesn't matter what the hell y'all doing over there. Right. What they were doing is messing with the levels while we were rapping and stuff. Did so when we would pass know. mics to compensate, that was the mic they just took down and up, and we were like, oh. We actually were almost oh, like arguing with them. Oh, so the, the, the song. At so, the end, we dapped up. But yeah. So they were bringing literally, down. Literally, we're doing our thing on stage. Yes, we're doing our thing on stage, and then when the mics were insufficient, we were passing them. They were check changing the levels of the mic as to we match who was lead vocal so time, or who was background vocal as if they know the song right 
Yeah, what are you doing? Well, no, just just as we were rapping, if we were lower, if they were changing my shit, but I'd already passed that mic. So mm-hmm. they were undoing what we were doing on stage, and we were doing the same. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. So it was just, it, but anyway, they, they were talking to us like, don't trade mics, don't cuff the mic. Like, we don't know what we're doing. Like, don't do that. Right. I don't care if I'm, I'm a rapper. I don't care what I look like. I know what I'm up here doing. So don't talk to me as if I don't know what I'm doing as to why I'm having difficulties. No, y'all are over there twisting knobs and, and sliding buttons. And I'm telling y'all, they had an iPad type thing. They were doing this oh, wireless yeah. Yeah. sliding and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, wearing tight staff shirts. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Like, you you <laughs> okay. want to look important. You're Reeling in it back, back in. Foot. Reeling no, it back in. Yo, you want to look, you're in the back. You're in the back, and and you're wearing black, meaning nobody can even see you, dumbass. So look, <laughs> just get my shit right. And and but I, I do have to say there's a caveat to the story. I didn't make it to sound check, so. And okay. Right. No, no, no. That I, I'm just putting that out there for fact. But also there were like ten acts. Everybody did two songs. It was like a little benefit thing. So they were constantly fiddling with whatever they were doing over there. Like it was just you know. But well, thanks for I'm admitting. Not... Thanks for admitting you did make it to sound check. Yeah, that's important. Context is key. Okay. How do you feel about the time period oh. covered? You said there were some discrepancies okay. with the uh, fashion you had issues with. Clo- yeah, it was certain clothing they, they were wearing that wasn't out yet <laughs> or um, <laughs> it didn't quite match. But I, but I have to say they were pretty accurate as the season went on. If you looked at what Raekwon was wearing, some of the things Cherie was wearing oh, yeah. specifically – that um, Polo Divine had on. That was a classic. Like, all the low heads were like, ooh, see Did that Did you piece? see when Ray had the Snow they, Beach pullover on? Yeah. that's. Ooh. But, again, he didn't have that until the video shoot much later. Right. But, you know, that was like an Easter egg, you know, put it Yeah, they got to give it to us at but some like point. like that strike yeah. joint. It. But no, like he had a, the gold tarantula. He did not have that. But No, but he, he didn't have a gold lady. tarantula. You, when you said that last time. Yeah, no. No, that was, was a scorpion. scorpion. It was a scorpion. Yeah, yeah it and the, scorpion. and the tarantula was white. But to gold. me, but seeing that, right, but seeing that around Raekwon, what are you gonna think? If you blink, you, you gonna think, think gold? No, like, I'm gonna think he in the streets. This is the lead up to the gold tarantula. He in the streets, he getting money. He a D boy. He like jewelry. So we see in the precursor to the white gold tarantula. That's how I looked at it. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll take that back. Yeah, but yeah, so the time. Pe- All right, so I love the '90s and. Mm-hmm. I'm a New Yorker, y'all, if anybody don't know. And that, it was a dangerous <laughs> time in New York, but it was one of our great times. It was a great, great moment. So I love seeing that um, that time period and, and um, you know, stuff like that. The stuff that just reminded me, like, um, the last episode, seeing how, um, you know, how record labels were just kicking off. Like, Steve Rifkin was, like, in that yeah. room, a little rundown, like, shit like that. Yeah. I'm seeing before everything popped off. Yeah, that, that was really that. great. But... Again, they were, you know, so like this show and this series, because of the um, internet community I keep, it's hard for like diehard Woo members and like, you know, uh, hip hop like revivalists, like, because they start thinking of, well, what year did this happen? That could have been this and that, as opposed to just being a past each. For anybody that never knew about the Wu Tang at all, you know, it's fit for that. It's not fit for like Wu Tang historians. That was a documentary, but. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think they did. A, I think they did a decent job. I think, I think they did a. a uh, I'll give them a B minus. B minus. I like that you made that distinction. That though, you know, the Wu historians, the self-proclaimed uh, Wu historians, have an issue with this versus the documentary. And I think I love that that's, that this is happening. I love that this is creating a space for our story, our stories to be told this way to be presented this way as opposed to just documentary form. It's kind of like um, when Brian Singer was giving us the X-Men and was like, and made that declaration from the jump. The movies are, the cinematic universe is different when it comes to Marvel. So don't come with your comic book shit. This is our ability to do whatever we want with these characters. And that's that. So that's how I've been looking at this. Honestly, uh, I think I would be more critical if they were doing a bad job with it, <laughs> like if they were being shitty with it. Um, but the fact that it's so good, I'm totally cool with any steps from reality that they take, as long as it's not like super crazy and slanderous and, um, you know. Where is you, God? Oh, okay. <laughs> 
You though? No. I mean, sure. Yeah. Y'all real woo heads don't give a shit? <laughs> don't get started on Waves you yo. Don't even get me started. <laughs> well, I, I, I will say this. Uh, and, you know, I don't know how people may feel about it. I'm not missing them. I mean, it's, y'all acting like y'all acting like uh, y'all whoa, missed. Whoa, whoa, what you talking about? Son? Listen, Yo. listen, B, listen, B. About, don't act like, don't act like. Let me ask you this: On the Pantheon, who is higher for you, Wu or Cat? I mean, uh, wait, you got a cat on the what? On the on, on the list on the Pantheon, the Wu Pantheon. Who is more important to you? That's a you got question. or Cat? Who got? You got is my favorite member of the world. How? Yo, you're, uh, oh, uh, you know, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We had this conversation already. You, you do. No, I listened to you say this on the uh, on your uh, um, Call Out Culture po- podcast. MJ Castro admitted to picking the second. Like, if it came to Batman or Robin, he's a Robin fan. Like, he went down a list of different people, different collabs, like. Whoever's the main people that everybody like, I like that other guy. He's a contrarian. He's a contrarian. No but one, no, 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 no one not, loves you guys. But that's not you guys no, gets clowned not, that's consistently that's though. That's not the reason I pick those guys. It just happens those are always the second tier guys. Like Malik B doesn't suck. No, he you know doesn't. But like he's I just not end up liking the other thought. guys. Fight don't suck. True. You know? But you guys, you guys has one successful single, and it's barely bizarre. That was it. There was nothing else you got put out that made any sense and that worked. You got, for but that's because you unplugged. Keep no, I tried. But I bought Bizarre on vinyl. No one should have bought that. Keynote <laughs> speaker is dope. Yikes! Venom I mean, is okay. Like he has, he puts out some decent projects. I kept, I kept giving him a try because he's an original member. It was like you're being disrespectful with your beat selection. I don't know what to tell you. And then you want to rap however you want to rap all over the beats. It's like all over the place. Blueface, baby. Okay. Oh. All right. Too far. Okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to start saying to reel it back in from here on out. All Everybody right. can, uh, I'll make a button or a hat. I feel, I feel like we talked about the cliffhanger ending already, so we can skip that, right? Everybody... Well, how yeah. do you feel about it? I mean, for me, mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't like a, the kind of cliffhanger where... I'm nail biting. You right. know what I mean? Right. It's like, oh, I think there's going to be a second season and it'll be cool to watch. You know what I mean? Like, okay. it's, if this ended and it didn't get another season and this was it, I think for a non woo head, this would be fine. Got you. Um, however, I don't think it should end. I think the show is good. I think it should continue and they that. should continue to tell the story. I love that. And I love these actors. They're doing a great job. Yeah. Hard S's and all. <laughs> <laughs> and bugged out eyes. <laughs> I know he has a headache oh, every single day. Out. Yo, he has a headache <laughs> every the, um, day. Or, or the or the front that they could have just came to Philly or New okay. York. I mean, so here's All the right. thing. I just want to have a little fit. chat. Okay, let's do Since it. Since we're going to skip the, the rest of that, right? Yeah. Let's just take a moment. Uh, it just goes into the next question. Too. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, should uh, I just best... be quiet? The front didn't fit him. Hold on, hold on. The, the, the next wait. The next question guess, is uh, best Wu member embodiment and worst uh, Wu member embodiment. Okay, well that doesn't go into that. Okay. That's not so, the same. So let's just, let's, let me, just, let me just, let's just talk about the fronts. Go ahead. I want to talk about the fronts and I want to talk about the wigs. <laughs> I just want a moment. The what? What's the other part? The wigs. The, the wigs. The wigs. Because you oh, can't. Oh God! I thought we were gonna skip it. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Because you listen, said it in dread. Oh God! You, listen, the amount of times I have to pause and be like, "Okay, but for real, <laughs> this is a high quality producti- pr- production. What are we doing?" But it's the, historically speaking, it don't even matter. I don't even know who they had on set or who they hired. They cannot. And they will no. It's not they cannot. They refuse to do black hair correctly. I, this is what I'm saying. I don't know. There what, are more black what, movies, more black shows. It's we're we're becoming more present and visible with the natural That's hair. Why I say they refuse. Hear me. Hear me out. It's not that they refuse, <laughs> because there are. I mean, maybe there are just still white showrunners that don't know any better, right? 
And maybe the actors are like, I mean, well, this is, you know, I guess this is what I look like today. Have we seen a good one? In, in, in I'm TV? about to I'm what? about to give you. OK. Quick, quick question. Wait, 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 Castro. Wait, wait, wait. Because no, oh, it's, it's, oh, it's curious that oh. this came up, though, Morgan. It's curious you brought this up because I didn't even start looking because this is my quick question. Riz's hair got worse it later did. on in the season. It did. It did. And then we go to him having the straight backs <sighs> wig. Which his hairline started at the cul-de-sac of. <laughs> oh wait, that was. Wait, 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 wait. That was during the video, right? He had yes. the cornrows, right? Yes. So that's why I looked bad when he was back on the streets after pulling the deal. I think they just used the old hair. I was like, no, God, hair no, 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 no. They're really different bad. wigs. They're different wigs. Oh, but my but God. all of them was... are bad, is what I'm saying. Listen. Yeah, There's a, there, we all have made fun of the Shamar Moore braids and whatever yes. uh, prayed up black movie he was in a long time ago yes. where he was the light skin cheating hit you dude. <sighs> yeah. Oh, we know the historical worst one though is uh, in too deep. Um, Omar Epps hair. Oh, easily. He, um, at the end, when he... <laughs> it it is incredibly bad. Is that worse than Eight Mile Locks? Comparable. Say, that's the, that's the, comparable. No, it's not, it's, comparable. It's not the, all the locks. It's not all of the locks in Eight Mile. It's the one lock that falls in its face, and as a person that has locks, there's no goddamn way. Okay, and except I'm for J. Cole got that shit popping life. right now, and I'm like, in what world does that just wow. hit your lip and you ain't got no beef with it? Uh, right. He doing it right now. You, you gotta better flip, watch an you interview. You flip your hair, or you at least. Or you at least take that one out of your face. Yeah, you because need a bobby the pin. other thing is, it's not just irritating. It all, it's it's um it's um it's not just annoying. It's irritating. It irritates your skin. Yes, yeah. like, of course. He needs a bobby pin. Bouncing on your face. It's. Yeah. I need to go back to this though, yes. like because I just yes. want to finish this thought. Yeah. Of you want to say there was a good how hair. bad the wigs are for black people, especially when they're braids. <laughs> they're always awful. We expect awful yeah. when it comes to, which is crazy for our natural hair ends up looking like. Maybe unnatural. maybe that's what our natural hair looks like to white people. I don't know. Oh, like I don't know the science behind it, but hear me out. <laughs> there's ne- there's there's so technology. There are women in every neighborhood right now making the best custom wigs in True. their neighborhood. True, and they're three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. The better quality, the more money, right? Mm-hmm. So if you can be a bank teller. And make thirty five thousand dollars a year, and afford a five hundred dollar wig. Hulu ain't got no fucking business putting mops <laughs> on top of motherfuckers' heads and painting them black. Also, for a very quick recent comparison, mm-hmm. there uh, Chance the Rapper was just on SNL. Oh wow! In the skit where he's a judge, yeah. I can't remember what Judge Barry or some yeah, shit like that. Judge Barry. There's a dude that comes in who has half of his hair braided straight back cornrows wow. and the other half out. Is it the best wigs SNL has ever done? Yes, for black people. <laughs> like it actually doesn't. His yeah. hairline starts where it's supposed to start. Yeah. It's not all fuzzy in between. Like yeah. they, you, they're two week old cornrows. Like it is the best. They could have, at the very least, done what they did at SNL there. You know what I mean? Good point. It's a it's a no, big it's point. a it's a huge good point. demerit for me. All right, you so. can't have an all black cast and have white people doing the black people wigs. <laughs> oh no! Or maybe you can, and but you got to get better white mark? people making the wigs. I don't know. And then we move to the front. <sighs> the fronts that are as big as a bus stop. And ain't nobody's mouth big enough to hold that shit. So listen, listen. We got lisps out of nowhere now. Everybody has a speech impediment, but it's just because they have fronts in their mouth. And all the speech impediments are different. Listen, this is what I said Mm -mm. to Morg over the weekend in preparation for this call. Like y'all was taking shots at my man in the last podcast episode. About his mouth being open, he can't close his mouth because of listen. Big as a bus stop. All I were, all I was saying, it hit me later on. Like, wait a minute, Ray mouth is always and open. Ray mouth stay open yes, though. But Ray lips stay open. Ray's but, mouth. But he had, but his fronts were made for his crooked teeth. For his <laughs> Thank you. you know saying, it's it not because his. <laughs> It's not because his fronts were too big. That's because he had somebody else's fronts in his mouth. Exactly. 
Yeah. But y'all couldn't have got this man a custom grill from the fucking mall. They do that shit. They do too many places for you That's to gun to you know, the swap me. Yo, cat's teeth was fucked up and mismatched in size, and them fronts would fit them. They would make that mold for yeah. that mouth and yeah. shit like that. And the fact that these are like it's props. just it's just too it, simple for them to get it right for them to get it this wrong. I feel you. These things are really go exactly, to exactly go to any hood. No, no, ain't no ain't every no AC, hood. Ain't go no to DC every hood USA. There. Every hood no USA going down to gold for cash. They're not sending the, the AP down there. They're right, they won't do it. Right. That's it, you know. Right. But apparently they ain't got no problem going to a swap meet real quick and just buying a belt buckle uh, and saying, put this in your mouth real fast. <laughs> they ain't got no problem buckle. with that. <laughs> Fucking four finger <laughs> ring. Oh, oh, oh. See if we could just like uh, oh, tape it. Oh, man. They were bad. Yeah, so. Okay, so Castro, you, you do realize that he's taking the fat suit off if there was, ever was one, which I don't believe there was. It was just uh, three pairs of sweats or something. Uh. Yeah, I it's gone. That he's not all real time. They were like, but I think it's maybe Rick the Rick doesn't need to be fat. Remember, he's in the <laughs> church, but in the church, he's sitting down. Like, there's, you know, yeah. different scenes in terms of, like, even at the end, you see him through a window. So I think they cut him ways down and say, you'll forget that. Just yeah. shoot him. You know what I'm saying? Shoot mean, him differently so we don't have to wear a fat suit. He never needed to wear the fat suit. If he would have just had the body language right, right. it would have been fine. No one would have been like, that's not Ray Kwan. Right. Plus, this is when he's mad young, so we didn't. Have yeah, to, he didn't have. He didn't to be, have to have yeah. the Buddha belly. Yeah, yeah. But he did. I mean, to be honest. All right. So he did. He did. He was a round motherfucker. So what was y'all? <laughs> what was y'all? Because uh, he was uh, sleeping outside in New York. Jesus. And had to hibernate. He had that fat to help him make Stay it through warm. the winter. Jesus. Do that. All right. Favorite woo. Favorite woo embodiment. Who did it the best? Who wore the woo the best? Oh man, I have a couple. All right, who's your first? Who's the top of your list? My top is Dave East is fucking killing Method Man. He is. Is he it is. Method Man? I totally disagree. Well, wow. you're wrong. Wow. You haven't watched enough source he's, interviews he's, I like think I have. Exactly. <laughs> you didn't hang. Think, you ain't hang meth up on your like wall, did rock. you? Wow. I did. He's like a pet rock in his uh, He is. <laughs> oh, he's I a think. Pet rock. Okay, I, I'll give you that. There's not enough personality, but I think that it's like. I see that being him at that time mm-hmm. in the circumstances that I think he's Kakeem, in the show. I think, I think he gets the benefit of being the most, the one actor that physically resembles the character he's playing. So we give him more the benefit of the doubt to think he's playing Meth better. But I just, what Meth was really happy go lucky. We forget when he was young, you know, he was always the one jumping in the interview, doing all these demonstrative things with his hands and his arms. I think they should have got somebody a little bit more like I think, that. I think I we're going to get there. Yeah, going. that's what I'm saying. We I, haven't I gotten we're there yet get in the there. story. Yeah. I think this is this is who Method Man... If, if, and I could be wrong. I'm not saying that I'm right uh-huh. about this, but it feels accurate. So even if to, like at that time frame, that seems accurate. That seems like the trajectory that where I pick up of knowing Method Man at, this could all be absolutely true mm-hmm. and lead up right to exactly who you're talking about. Especially going through what he went through in high school. Like, we're seeing that story now. Like, yeah. it wasn't, this, this isn't the period for him to become the happy go lucky person yet. So I definitely, I agree. Yeah, with he got a that. lot of trauma popping right now. Yeah. Um, for me, G had another one. I do. I have a couple. Wait, wait. wait. I, okay. Can I get my first one in the case is one of your second? The case is your second or third? I mean, uh, whatever, I guess. Okay. It's going to be. It's probably going to be. My, of course, ODB. Of course. That that kid nailed ODB. And this is where Castro says, actually, I disagree because Old Dirty Bastard has a son named Young Dirty Bastard. <sighs> And he's problematic. And no, he, I and he should agree. have been he's played tr- him. He's troublesome. No, young dirty bastard auditioned for the role, but they went with an actor. I bet the they did. Looks just like his father. They he, went with the he actor. Does look he just did. like he him. So much better. Yeah. Have you so, seen him talk about it? Audition. Not yet. No, I've tried. I tried to stay away from them, and they're um, you know, out of character until the end of the series. Mm. I didn't want to see them. Well, he's not in it. So, you, oh, well, so you're gonna... talking about have you seen Young Dirty? Oh, you meant, oh, I thought you meant the actor. Nah, nah. Oh, actor. no. I'm young talking dirty, about dirty. actual Young Dirty. Have you seen him no, talk no. about Wu no, and no, his no. feelings? And he did it on Sway. He's a lot. Yeah, he's a lot, B. He wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been able to direct him. He's a very entitled young man. Yeah, young I think, they wouldn't have been able to give him it. direction at all, yo. Straight up. Okay, I think, that, and I think that there's some of the articles that we're talking about. It were like, 
saying that between the lines. Like he wasn't coachable. That's yeah, what I got. I would. I mean, yep. It would. Yeah. One hundred percent. That tracks. 100%. <laughs> that tracks. One hundred percent. So yeah, the ODB uh, dude playing him. I, I, oh crap! I can't remember his name. It's like I never knew his name. I never knew. TJ something. I'm. I'm not sure. Uh, sorry. Shout out to him. He's dope. He got it. The embodiment with the uh, overalls on is just each time. I'm Oof. like, yeah, that's perfect. Oh that's my god. Absolutely perfect. The um, real quick. Mm-hmm. Him in the studio in the last episode. Yeah, and they're recording. And they're like, quit wasting our studio time. And he's like, my, my, my voice, voice is, is an instrument. instrument. <laughs> like, he would fucking say that. Like, I feel like that's a direct quote. Straight up. Okay, and then my last, um, mm-hmm. I I love Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't oh think, I don't think Dennis is, I, I don't think Dennis is doing an accurate portrayal of Ghost. Okay. But I love Dennis. You love, Dennis. You love him. Uh, but but he's not on my list. I just okay. wanted. To, I he just felt like it. I needed to give him an honorary shout out yeah. because he's doing a fantastic job. He for... would appreciate that, son. And he, he would come to the party with a bottle already opened up, son. And he would <laughs> smash the party. But he's gonna apologize to you later, really nice, like and respectful, and call you ma'am, son. <laughs> All of that is real. Uh, so then my other is um, old boy playing RZA. Uh, okay. I do like him. I, I do think like him. he has though that. I think he probably has more rhythm to his awkwardness than RZA actually does in real life. Yeah. But he has like certain little dips and and movements that he makes. It's like awkward, but also yeah. Somehow, making him unique. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it just seems like oh, this is after talking to you guys and you telling me how awkward he is in real life. <laughs> And that all just like kind of uh, confirming what my thought of Rizzo was right. like, but the way that everybody talks about him is that he's the king of all he'd things. Castro, yeah, wouldn't you agree yeah. that Rizzo was able to shape the, to mold the world around him to where his awkward in, in the way that his awkward became his cool? Yeah, I mean. Because they always had that that intellectual angle, like they didn't sound like dumb niggas, so mm-hmm. he could always make his um, assumptions, his little phrases sound like they were some some Zen wisdom because he knew how to speak on. It. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he would quote, you know, the kung fu movies and all that stuff. But the way he spoke, I remember, like to get what you're saying, and I remember every time their um, their punctuation marks would be like five percent gems. Right. So it didn't matter what they said before, because they would say, you know, knowledge is, is, is God and God is the key. And like, if you mm-hmm. end it with that, then it makes you seem like you're saying like you're rarefied like, air shit. So they always, yeah, they always seemed like they were really smart and figured it out and had, it, you know, had, it, had known. <laughs> yeah, it just seemed like they just, they seemed smarter than their age because they would pepper and dot all of their speech with their 5% knowledge. So one of the, yeah, one, of the one of the, one of his lines that you always though. quote when you, do your impersonation is that perpendicular to the square? And <laughs> that's from that's from the fourth chamber, and that video. I remember when that video dropped, and RZA was spitting them lines. We were just watching him on the TV. It was like, nigga, what? Stay like, like it was just like <laughs> this is the most incredible because he was he was stumbling like. In that video, to the dragon's he was killing it on some old, like, <laughs> fall up in the spot. We're watching him fall up in the spot over and over in the video. It's like, oh, nah, RZA is the shit. Like, he's fall the up shit. Into the cerebral yeah, cortex. He never jumped. My reaction to him. That's what I'm saying. Never it's was. crazy. What's your mind like a, like a nut from raw sex? He's easily, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's easily lowest of the coolest people in the, in the original nine. He's down at the bottom, just on some everyday average cool. He's not the dude you're hanging with. Right. But then when he does shit like that, it's like he puts he's so awkward, so weird that it's like, oh, standard, shit. But he was still set the style standard. Right. He still would, you that's know. That's what I was, that's where I was going. Style, they, they, now they, <laughs> they styled up. They would take the style seeds from him, you mm-hmm. know, the kung fu, the slang and all that. And once you get that in the Method Man's hands and Raekwon's hands. And oh, Jose's it's hands, a wrap. Once hands, Meth then, get it, it's over. Right. Yeah, no matter. Right. But, it, but the, the impetus <laughs> yeah. would start with him. But they would definitely mutate it with yeah. their powers and shit. But yeah, you're right. He wouldn't be like the coolest in the room, but he made it. 
the Abbott. He, he embodied that A, that point. Like, I'm a, you know, I'm going to start crazy. everything. And yeah, as a person finish. who doesn't know all of those things, it's like, why does anybody think Rizzo's cool? <laughs> Yo. That, for, that was forever going to be my question. Man, fourth chamber. Woo. And you know what? He was also, you know what else, more? He was the most disciplined in the room. Yeah. He was able to tame these wild lions. Nobody believed in this shit because none of them did it. It's not like they had a cousin right. that did it or something. Right. Nobody did it. So they were really believing in a fantasy outcome. And they all had to humble themselves and like, and not humble, not just humble themselves, but steal themselves. They all had to chill. I can't be out here selling drugs. I can't be running mm-hmm. the streets. I can't be endangering the situation until we finish this thing and sell it and then see what it's hitting for. That's one of the most interesting arcs for me throughout this series is watching Ray kind of reel it back in. Mm-hmm. Making time to be in the studio, going back to see his his parents at church, like that's oh my god, so that's probably my well, second you know favorite the story. Arc. Cops that you just right this thing from yeah. right. you're gonna have second thoughts when you yeah. see the flower truck, right? But yeah, you know. Oh yeah, that was you know, ooh. Like, yeah, hell yeah. Yo, he, he power out? saves him, uh, and then. And, and then, then and he then, goes and is like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. The alphabet and then also boys. the parallel of, um, of him being embraced somewhat, because you didn't see his father, by mm-hmm. his family, mm-hmm. and power not being. Like his dad said, right. I don't want nothing to do. You know right. what I'm saying? There right. was a parallel there. I, I noticed. Because they were working together. Yeah, so, yeah, but I mean, is that really the comparable? Approach was because he, that, he was still using his parents' business as a stash spot. Yeah, which is different than being like well, just than just you've been kicked mission. out. Yeah, yeah. you've been kicked out of your parents' house and yeah. you're homeless. Yeah. yeah, like no, he ate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. So here's f- another curious thing for season two: <laughs> How are they going to explain to us and show us? Because this needs to be shown. We can't time jump this. Power. I need to see what Divine has to talk with him about. This is what's going to make us money. Yo, Divine so going to school and all of that. Yeah, they got to. Yeah. Sh- they they have to show us that. But yes. I I don't think that because there's any way they would turn. Yeah, power. Yeah, has to you talk to power in dollars one. and cents. But if you talk to him in dollars and cents, he'll come over. He wasn't yeah. stupid. He was a very smart cat. Yeah. He always been. But that I need to see that because yeah. he's a hard sell. Yeah. 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 And he I was mean, right. Every to- time he told Raekwon, keep your eye on the ball. With yeah. this rapid shit in your head in the clouds, he was right. Yeah. Just in those instances in the series, you know what I'm saying? He was right. Not just this thing, other little things. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was proven wrong. Like, you know, it wasn't like he was eating crow or Raekwon's, you know, rap dreams. He was right. Right. So, Kasha, who was your your best will embodiment? Who gave you your best will? Um... You're, y'all already pick old dirty because I think he's obviously okay. so I'm, I'm gonna pick somebody else. Um, I mean it's okay if old dirty was your best. Who was your worst then? No, no, I know that, I know that. But it, it was, it was, it was. Um, I liked, um, I liked Jizza. I felt like they could have made him a little more older and wiser because mm. he was at that age. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the one a little smarter than all the rest of them. But I liked, I liked the Gary Grice. Seeing him as like Gary Grice, mm-hmm. as opposed to just a, you know the genius. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I did appreciate his um, portrayal um, as it, as it went along. Um, I will say about all of them, I thought they all got better as the series went on. So I don't know the shooting schedule or whatever. Or if they mm-hmm. saw dailies, like if they showed the episode before they, they shot the next one, but they all were getting better and more comfortable um, portraying these cats. But yeah, I was I, I picked just mm-hmm. not Inspector Deck. If you don't take off your bandana, I don't believe your character. I was, well, so I was going to say, who was your who was who was, who was your worst? Would it be Dex? Well, no, Dex bandana. So that's oh, my, <laughs> my my worst was um, yeah. it, it was Dennis. Your worst was my worst was Dennis because I felt like they missed the mark from watching Ghost and trying to emulate him or talking to him about how crazy he used to be or whatever. I think they missed the mark a little bit. So this like is just co- was- this is ghost on PCP every day, just a micro dose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like no, I get, I get, but I like he's when just I say highly Mark, aggro. I say they got an intense cat, and they got a they got a highly agitated cat. But I just felt like it, sometimes it was misplaced. That's all I'm saying. I don't think it was just. Listen, Again, if just, I were like ghost and I lived ghost life, man. like y'all, ghost had a rough life. Yo, man. like all right, everything no, would be like, like what, right, son? Bear with me on this. <laughs> 
That would be in the trailer. All right, so the way they showed the over exaggerated characters in this in this in this series, uh-huh. as opposed to the way they showed over exaggerated characters in Sunset Park, Spaceman, the the Fredro character, all that stuff. Fredro worked, is that character in extra. everything he's in. It's true, but it's it true. Didn't, it didn't seem extra when he got when he got mad at the end for her leaving. All that kind of seemed genuine. Spaceman. He didn't even talk, and he was able to show I'm, you know, a misunderstood, you know, a pothead. I'm just like that type of thing was missing for me. If Ghostface was going to be a hothead, then you really get somebody that's going to play a hothead and not <laughs> look like they're reading off a teleprompter with son is like ten times bigger than all the rest of the world. <laughs> I mean, I'm not mad at you. The eyes get big. You're not. Yeah. You're not wrong. I just don't think that it's as bad as you think it is. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it, nothing you've said is wrong here. <laughs> um, worst for me, I don't know. Uh, cause I, I honestly I was just so excited to you see got. Deck. Oh. You, yeah, there was, there was there was a bad you. They did a bad job with you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, they did a um honestly. Okay, let me be hundred percent hundo. Yeah, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's, the worst for me would be Jezza. Um. And okay. that's only because I didn't get enough Capadonna for him to be the worst. There wasn't yeah. enough. Um, but Jizza, he could have been. You remember how Jizza was? He was hip hopped out when he was younger. True, yeah, but my this thing was, my Jizza. thing was, he just could have been anybody. Anybody could have did this. Like from okay. the casting to the acting, this really Jizza could have been, been anybody. More of a leader, a leader character. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Jizza's not my pick. Oh fuck, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, even to interrupt you, man. For it's your, um, it's Devon. Oh Devon. Yeah, Devon for your favorite. Yeah, you said Devon was on point. Yeah, it's Devon. Ugh, it's man, Devon. He was. That, he, it was. It's Devon. Whether you thought he was swarming or not, more he was hitting it. He was. He, he was steady. Like his silent moments of reflection. That's Devon. Yeah. So the way that guy was able to get that off on screen, that's Devon and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you have. I know your, they didn't give him a your, lot is to Devon do your worst? after he got out of jail. Huh? No, my best. no, no, I was asking, uh, um, asking MJ. Oh. I don't, I mean, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know him enough. Wait, who? Know him well enough to say who you're worth. Who your best? Yeah, like, I, I can't say okay, right? if he's doing yeah. a good embodiment of that dude. Like, that's you. what I'm going off of. Yeah, I, I don't sense. know if that's true or not. Okay. Yeah, Old Dirty was my best. Yeah. Okay. And more, your best was, was Ghostface, right? No. No. Um, oh, sorry. Method. Method Man. Meth. Method Man. Oh yeah, that's why I didn't remember because he. I fell asleep thinking about Davies. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. This some New York rapper hate. That's what. That's a, just a, you know. No, it's not a weird thing to do. It's not. It's a weird thing to do. Oh we my god. We a lot of rappers about Dave East's Method Man portrayal. But anyway, let's go. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to ask a whole bunch of rappers. I want you, the rapper, to tell me why it's bad, and you didn't really. So we can move it's, forward. I did. It's kind of static and stiff. Okay, he played the role like his crutches. Oh, no wow. <laughs> okay, would you recommend this? Series? All right, Davies, what are you gonna do in this scene? I'm gonna stand up straight. Okay, stand up straighter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually funny. <laughs> I'm not doing that. That's what his role. The whole stand series. Up straighter. Was, All right. Standing up straight. I don't think you stood up straight once, but... Yo, what am I going to do? I got fired from a job. I'm not at. How did I get in? And why am I working on... Yo, I would like... Tell me I'm fired. I would like to talk about how you're in the back. Guys, that made total sense to me. Why? I will explain. Go straight into a job without talking it. I will explain. I've worked many retail situations where when when you're starting your shift, you just walk right in and get to work. It's not the that supervisor says true. something to you that they even know that you're there. Okay, yeah, but he's back but there with a friend. Was going, that friend don't know. work there. You don't get to take your friends back to the stock. But, we, but we've seen him. He would ask his boss, I'm coming back today, and he said, okay, right? He didn't just no, now. That, listen, when you, when, you, when you haven't done all the follow-up you're supposed to. Oh, they didn't hold the position. Right, right. Right. When you haven't done all the follow-up you're supposed to, that's how you do that. You just go in and start working until somebody say something to you. You're like, huh? Uh, What? uh, Oh, they got to talk to me in the back? 
Huh? Oh, wait till oh I all right. Take my lunch. Yeah, that's. I, I watched. Yo, this I, is some shit you would do. Yo, know, not just me, but I've watched this happen. Like I've seen dudes come in. And I'm like, and we'll be like, yo, why is he here? Like mm. this, this, this nigga is fired, fired. Yesterday. Yeah, he got yeah, dumb yeah, fired. Cool. And I think at some point, that's for me because y'all can relate to seeing someone though. at the job that y'all know was like, oh, they let him back in here. They caught. What is such a, like? Yeah. What is such a, such a doing back here? That's wild. Yeah. So, as far as having people in the back, we've had we watched them have people in the back room all season. So that's the hangout. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, that, that didn't. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, true. that's fair. <laughs> yeah. somebody, they hem somebody up in the back. <laughs> right. They hem somebody up. <laughs> right. Like what was those the dudes back room. there? Oh my God! Definitely there. don't let him in. He got to stay outside the whole mall. Listen, you, you outside the island, nigga. Yeah, out here you can't water. prank. You can't take those nowhere. With a gift shop. He the way he played you him, gotta go you get leave pretzels. him outside all the time. Uh, you, you gotta, gotta go, go get pretzels. Time. You gotta give Ghost like a task. Like go get all of us a pretzel with cheese and a, with we'll cheese and in. a we'll drink, and in. then yeah. stand Yo, right there until we get back. I'm gonna be right back. Yeah. Right, he's gonna give us all of that, but he ain't gonna. Put your shit on what? But that's our timer. Talk we know, we know that's only. We know that would normally take anybody ten minutes. It's gonna take him seven. Right. So we gotta hurry up. No, but no. Meet him out front. Nope. You can't send him out. You come out. He's fucking flipped the cart, <laughs> throwing hot dogs at motherfuckers and shit. This is so real. Filling hot dog water on somebody like it's a whole situation when all you did was send him to get you a hot sauce. And take his ass nowhere. All right. So, would you recommend? I think it's safe to say you guys would recommend this to other people, right? I would definitely recommend. I would recommend it more to people that don't know anything about the Wu than I would to a Wu head. So you'd say, so you'd say, watch this before watching the documentary. No, I would. I would. No matter what, I would tell everybody watch the documentary first. Okay, before someone who isn't a woo head, you think they would enjoy this less after watching the documentary? So they should oh, probably me, watch this amend first. Let me amend that. Okay. Any young cats coming up or youngsters that don't know woo or weren't around, watch this show. Right. I think this would be a better medium for them to get it. Then right. watch the documentary. Right. Documentary is four parts. Teenagers can't watch four parts or something. Yeah, so I would, they can watch thirteen reasons why. Is, um, so they definitely can yeah. watch four parts. They can watch thirteen reasons but, why. So but they, they can watch just, but, but think about it. Their TV is built for binging and cliffhanging. Our TV was built for serial. Wait a whole week. There's a little difference in the writing. Not a lot, but there's a little difference to me. Uh, there's a, there's a difference for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but anybody over 30 or whatever, I would give them the disclaimer about the show first. I'd say it's not as accurate as you would like it to it be. It ain't the real. real. So before oh we God. vote, before Hip-hop. we vote, <laughs> <laughs> before we vote, there was one more question you added in there, Castro. I think it's really good. Um, do you okay. think this satisfied satisfy the woo heads? Why or why not? So I want to jump in there and respond. Um, yeah. Growing up, in and around within the Wu head community. I don't think this satisfied them and I don't care. Like I don't want them to be satisfied. They're old curmudgeon. They're like they're they complain about every fucking thing. I don't care about them. He's at all. you, Castro. How do you feel about <laughs> Okay. I don't want them to be satisfied. Cause I mean He ain't talking to me, God. You better do your math. Oh, nah, nah, Peace fam. God. Nah, Peace Lord. God. I ain't talking to you, Lord. This ain't same direction that you be. So like nah, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Like those those people are stuck in a moment in time. They're stuck there. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm good. I'm I, I love this. I think the documentary is for them, and this is for everybody else. What you got, Cass? Um, I'm a little bit. I agree with you, but I'm a little more on the fence with it. Okay. I, I know why they they wanted something a little more accurate or gritty or the why because these other shows exist. The Wire and other good shows out the out the park, you know, do well. So I can understand people kind of wanting that a little bit. But I think there's with that desire or that want comes some surrealism. RZA wrote it. Once you know RZA's in the writing room, then you have to temper your expectations into RZA Landia. <laughs> so <laughs> even if this wasn't about Wu Tang and RZA wrote it, oh, I'm, I know what I expect. So right. that's that, you know. Right. So I just think you take this, you take the sugar with the salt. That's all I'm saying. Um, 
But I think it's a good time had by all because as much as any Wu head, even including myself, can criticize it for certain things, there's certain moments you just sit there like a kid, like, oh. Like when they do Seven Chamber, who uh. cares? Like nobody really gives a fuck that it's oh, this accurate or that didn't happen in this studio or the beat was. You still have those moments. You know, that, that yeah. wow moment and shit yeah. like that. You're still going to have those if you live through any part of that. So sometimes you can just get over yourself. I think in reruns and perpetuity, people will enjoy the series a lot. Because the main thing, and more, I think you'll agree with me here, it exists. Like, yep. that's the main thing. This, yep. this exists. Yes. And you can go buy it in a store real soon. You can download it. It, it, it happened. They did it. Yep. High five, woo, and soon to it actually exists. So now you right. have to deal with it. it right. You know what I'm saying? It's not a myth. It's not a project. It was uh, a pilot that wasn't you know executed. This thing exists. And I applaud them for that, for getting something like that done. TV is not easy. Well, you know, productions are even harder. And oh, I can't imagine. I haven't worked in TV. I can imagine just to get through, you know, get a whole season out. So um, even if they never come with a second season, I think they did a great job. And I think if you are a woo head, you owe it to watch it. Like all the cats complaining are complaining because they're watching every episode. I have I know some cats that oh I can't do it I dropped off, but those are the commitment right. cats you were talking about. Yeah, and the cats that you know the purists that just want things their way, so they drop. They were gonna drop out regardless. Regardless. Okay, so all right, um, we're gonna yeah. vote, and then when I ask you guys, I want to read a status to you guys that's not directly related to this. But I want your input. I, I want your reaction. I don't even need an input. I just need your reaction to it because it's so ridiculous. So let's vote. I give this the maximum amount of no names possible. I'm on no name depth on this. So are we doing a number of no names or each person gets a no name? I know I asked. I think, I think we did a number. Actually said right? Right? No, I like, think it's now we give a no name. Okay. A full, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So you give a yeah. full no name. I give a full no name. I do too, simply because this is a fun story to get into. It's so fun. And mm-hmm. I really love all of the extra characters that come along yeah. with the families and all of that. And again, Attila. Um, <laughs> it's just a, it's a really thorough telling yeah. of a bunch of different stories. So I like it. Castro. All right. I'm, I'm going to have to give it. Uh, no, three quarters. Three quarters. Okay. Half of the quality, but it's it's turned into a good bad experience for me. Like it's <laughs> bad in a lot of areas, but it's so bad it's good sometimes, and um, I enjoy that. Um, also, the the credits do a lot for me to see all of the Wu members' oh, names. Yeah. yeah. So regardless of the, how we feel about it, they all co-signed it, and when you know, regardless of how much input each of them had, they all you know checked off on it they all signed off on it so that alone makes me proud and makes me accept it in this form and enjoy it for what it is speaking of like credit we have uh we think superheroes seriously. right seriously speaking of credits the way they ended the last episode with the actor with Shamit rapping Ray's verse in the credits on seven check like that. Oh was, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my. yeah. They, 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 I was they like, the word. Gonna, you're right. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I <laughs> lost it. I'm like, yo, they're tripping. That was so dope. <laughs> okay. Also, I want the listeners and us to remember that on like episode eight, I'm I'm not sure. I think that was the front. That was the first time that you actually heard a Wu Tang beat that they had the rights to. Like the beat was in full fledged when full beat. when um. In the studio, yeah, yeah. When they went to the radio station and Rizzo was thinking to himself and calling himself Rizzo and shit, that was you know he must own that beat, mm-hmm. and they actually played it. And I was like, oh, as opposed to that, you know, shitty synth versions of some of the stuff they had earlier. So mm-hmm. that was a really good moment. All right, so that being concluded, the homie Sean Clay, uh, a comedian from Philly, he posted on Facebook. <clears throat> I like Power over the Wire overall. Because of character development, The Wire had better writers, no question, but power is must-see TV that keeps you on the edge. The Wire was using regular people, and the acting was atrocious. Wow, someone's never seen The Wire. Especially the elementary student. Oh, my God! (laughs) Wow. What the no? Call this man right now. I would never hear that, that thing you read. (laughs) <laughs> that's incredible that somebody thought that. Yo, you cannot wow. be serious. That that status. I thought it was just some hood motherfucker on that power shit. I get that. You know, right, right, right. It's like, like 
you these have people have started great careers even and, ones that aren't acting hello now, those are like it's like you put the gauge at zero then you have plus 100 that status is minus 100 it's the exact everything he all, said was the exact opposite, opposite of fact of what the real all, all those actors in there even the ones that don't even what? McNulty and all that you don't see anymore because he's one they're all excellent actors like all of them McNulty like, ended up at 300 that. you know what I'm saying like Everybody moved on to something. Right, right. Indeed, I'm just saying, like, yeah. you know, we're not seeing them on our American TV. I'm just right. saying, like, you know, right. some of the cats you don't see regular. You know. um, oh, but a lot um, of them you do. Call it the young... uh, I don't know, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a thought. A lot yeah, of these, if, if they're not singing, if they're not singing, band. they're acting. You right. know what I'm saying? Like Mac Wild, even Dookie. Mac Wild. You know, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking yeah, of, I didn't I'm even know of, that till um, I looked it up. Dookie. No, Dookie sings. Dookie sings. I'm thinking of um the other kid, the um Mac Wild. Uh, the no, the boy, the boys home kid. I can't remember his name. The oh, uh, the yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, yeah, he's the one that doesn't do anything now. That's which, what I be which thinking. Which one? About, what I think. Okay. The one that was in the always oh, in the fourth home. Uh, okay, Randy. 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 Oh, Damn, you did. I Randy. checked. I checked his what's the name. Randy. His uh his IMDb. He's still doing stuff. It's just like B movies. Okay, good. But you're still getting paid. You still, you know what I'm saying? But to say that acting is, and mind you, we're talking about the kids. But he said overall the acting was atrocious, especially the kids. So you're saying all the like all of the actors that were in. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, but that's just uh, Omar. And you compare it to Um, Declare Me Power. Here's the thing. To be fair, I'm just yeah. I have not watched Power. And the reason I haven't watched I don't Power watch either. is because I, I stopped watch watching either. Empire and didn't feel like I needed to watch another show that was on the same level. No, but I, to give it its credit, I know I heard that Power was much better than what Empire turned into. And I think right. that's why I Power think, was even I more I think that at this... Empire decayed and Power got better. So mm. I think it's right, still, I think at the same... Uh, when they came out, they were very similar in show. Gotcha. And then they mm-hmm. took a departure. So okay. they went heavy on the... The thing that's funny to me about Power is that it's the story of Avon and uh, and Stringer, is right? It? I don't know. Like, I, I just, never watched uh, Power give me, I, I don't know anything okay, about Okay, so it. then let me just say. Mm-hmm. It's the, okay, I want to be exactly. a businessman, but I'm a drug dealer. How do I get out the game? How, it, that's the story. Yep. Right. And then it flowers yep. from there right. in all of the ways. So, that it, I mean, so that's the same. You call it must-see TV. Mm-hmm. I, I think that that's true for, for the people, people that watch it. I mean, everybody talks about power. I, I don't do. watch it, and I think You're that right. uh, it's but probably here's a really the boost with power. Here's, here's the boost with power because even um, I don't know if that one did well, but uh, um, how to get away with murder. What's the other one with um, homegirl in it with the president and stuff? Scandal, 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 scandal. So all of those shows kind of tailed off, and I think that's where power's strength is. It's gotten better. Mm. Like we say, uh, Empire kind of tailed off. Like it writes itself into a corner where they run out of things to to talk about. Empire Power went like too anything. soap opera too went, fast. Yeah, yeah. That was okay. Empire's okay. fault yeah. em- or downfall. They they went way too okay. over the top, f- fantastical, dumb shit too quick. Like yeah. if you're mm. looking to be a longevity, you know, like a long standing soap opera, mm-hmm. fine. But throw those you know weird shits in, but. You can't you. have like Lu- Lucius die seventeen times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that type but, of shit. Just um, it was like WB enlighten TV. And en- en- enlighten up. Is power yeah, good? Is it a good? Oh, show? I don't. I've I only watched one episode. Mm-hmm. I've never. I've never watched the show, okay. so it's, I'm not. Uh, I've only seen the first app. Yeah. So not well versed. I just mean that from what I glean from everybody that talks about it on the internet, the people that do their spoilers simply because everybody's pissed off that they haven't watched it yet. I mean, it's a it's a drug dealer. Mm-hmm. Should I stay or should I go? Situation. Right. And now it sounds right. like a soap opera to me. Like, yeah. So and so's girl wants him to stay in the but, game. So now she's in the game. So now she's arrested. One like, of my, one of my <laughs> okay, it's the days of our lives. <laughs> cool. Days of our drug lives. One, one of my good friends that I watch a lot of shows with, like, she told me to watch show I watch. So she talks highly of power. So I have to. That's give the it thing. Credit, yeah, I, mean, I don't know anybody who watches it who is like. A hundred percent trash on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're they're. Uh... Like, no, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'm an American horror story fanatic, and that is a horrible show. And yet, the bloggers like we are slaves to the rhythm. We watch it every year. I disagree on it being show. a horrible show. I mean, I'm I, I'm not going to go that finished, far. We just finished Apocalypse, and that... no, it's not a horrible show. Let me stop. Let me stop. There. Okay, it's not a horrible you. show. 
it's a coin flip. Could not and and could damn, be amazing. Could be mediocre. Okay. No, not just but but more not just every season. It does this thing where it makes a left turn every season. You're so right. When you watch a season, you might like the first half. Oh, uh, like, I see what you're saying. You're like, the left the turn is every what? season does mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So it's like I don't I don't disagree. Where are we at now? Yeah, but if it if it's a good switch, then cool. But like sometimes it's a weird switch. So pretty much American Horror Story, I think every other season except like one, like it's like good season, bad season, good like that kind of alternates. Mm. Um, but I, but I'm talking. To, my point is, I've watched every episode. I don't miss it. Yeah. I regret it if I I cringe after a bad season. Oh, what are they gonna do now? And I just sit there and just stare. And so you're saying there could be power fans out there that are like that. Doing the is same that what thing. you're getting at? So if they, if they wrote. I don't know power, but if they wrote it a certain way, like how American Horror Story is written, just in the veins of um, sucking you in and you're just in. Like, we're in this, I'm in the universe, I'm in. Like, I'm not yeah. in clock out. I so, think that that's, a, yeah. that's yeah. potentially true for yeah. power fans. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm upset that that you took us down that slanderous road of the wire. I'd like to take a moment and just say that is the greatest television show that has ever happened. So that's why I had to do it. Because of a wire aficionado, the person that put me onto the wire, I needed the world to hear your reaction. And I needed the world to hear Casio's reaction. I'm disgusted. Because... I'm yeah, upset. I mean, well, it's top five. It's not number one. It's top five. Because you have to Now put, we're in a, uh, into opinions, X-Files. and that's fine. <laughs> you said okay. that we're I mean, no, you fucking no, like to end no. it now. I'm not Facts. doing you this. You have to put X-Files and Sliders in the, oh, Game of Thrones in the fucking You can't put trash. Sliders in the same top You know what? It's been Thrones. fun. Let's end it on a high <laughs> note. <laughs> have, y'all no, even, no. have y'all even... See, this is the thing about Sliders. Y'all just watch the episode. Y'all don't embody the emotion. Y'all don't get the camaraderie of the Says team the man who Uh-oh. has a podcast with three other people that do the same thing he does. <laughs> Watch TV shows and embody the whole thing. That's what this is. <laughs> don't tell me we don't do that. Miss sliders, honey. I don't even that know what sliders easy. is. I'm a lot younger than you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know you remind me of more. You know what you remind me of? You remind me of some, some co-workers of mine I've had in my past that always say, oh, we don't get your references because you're always talking about, like, Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> or, like, um, or you're talking about, like, movies with Richard Pryor and um, G. Gene Wilder. Wilder. Like, yeah. we, we don't get your references. You're like, you know, that's, you remind me of that, Morg. Like, we don't get your references. Well, I'm just they doing say, it right now because I don't know what made. Sliders is. <laughs> say, say a movie that was but made in 1998. But I did watch The Toy. <laughs> Yeah. Did you say 1988? 1998. Oh. They always tell me say a joke past 1998, like a reference. I only, nobody knows my movie references because I'm always talking about some movies in the 70s or 80s. <laughs> well, you know. Expand no, you. I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's been fun. I tried to end this about five, almost six minutes ago. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I need you on the wire. Wu Tang forever. Thank you all for tuning in. Peace, Go listen you guys. to your favorite Wu Tang show. Please. Watch the series and watch the documentary of Mike's and Men on Mass Appeal, and watch this uh, series on Hulu. You'll and if better, anybody um, runs into you, God, ask him what happened. What had happened? What had happened? Oh, I know and what happened. Write it down. It's a negotiation, yo. Motherfucker trying to get me out of my money, man. Ain't nobody gonna try to get me out of my money, man. When I negotiate, you know what I'm saying? Buy my book. You got a book out. Oh. Get you guys' book. They got a book. Uh, get you guys' book. We you don't know, know who you Wu-Tang got is because history? he ain't in the Wu Tang show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I want to say this. No, really, before I go, and I don't know if anybody listens to the end. It needs to be said. It needs to be said that you guys was very much an influential member. Okay, nah, you true. might not know it from the amount of bars very and verses true. he has on projects, but he taught some of them how to rap. He knew a lot of them since they were kids. He was a very influential men- member. So it's kind of sad he's not in the series, yeah. but. I digress. Well, thank you. Buy for... you guys' book. Okay. Get get Yui. You know what I'm saying? Get his book. Buy a copy for Morgan. Mail it to um, Podcast Has No Name. We'll make sure she gets it. <laughs> yep. All right. Only way I'll read it. <sighs> All right, y'all. Bye. Peace. Later. Excellent. You're still here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of A Podcast Has No Name. If this is your first time checking us out, please subscribe. We are available on Google Play, Apple Music, Spotify, and pretty much everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Podcast Has No Name. Deuces. Subscribe, please, please, please. Click and comment.